Oh my god, hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Okay, so today's gonna be another chit chat video while I do my makeup because that's what I'm in the mood to do and I just wanna talk. Can we do that? Yeah? Thanks. <laughs> okay, so yes, like I said, I'm in a chatty mood today, so we're just gonna chop it up because if there's one thing I've been doing recently, it's been thinking. It's been thinking. I saw a TikTok the other day. Hold on, let me see. How can I start my face? 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 Okay. I saw a TikTok the other day, and she was, this girl was like, I don't understand why God put us on this earth just to think. <laughs> just to think like all this thinking <laughs> and when I say I agree I agree but I think thinking is good <laughs> there are a lot of things you can do with those thoughts you know they don't just have to be thoughts they can become actions but yeah so that was hilarious so that's what I've been doing a lot of thinking which we actually thank God because I could also not be thinking and I'm not gonna lie for a while for a few years I feel like I wasn't thinking as much so we thank God that I'm using my brain again, thank God. But anyway, I'm gonna link all of the makeup that I'm using in today's video down below. So I won't necessarily call them out, but check all information in the description box if you wanna see like what makeup I'm using. But yeah, um, okay. So I wanted to talk to you guys today about imposter syndrome, particularly because I think there are a lot of aspects to imposter syndrome, but particularly counting yourself out of things before even trying. I have had a few instances in the last few weeks where I have noticed that I would count myself out of something before even trying. And it's really interesting because I generally like think of myself as someone that, you know, is pretty confident. Like I'm pretty confident in my abilities and my skills and just what I can offer the world. But I have noticed quite like more than ever that it's also the little things, by the way, but like I've just noticed a few instances where I would count myself out before even trying. And I'll give you guys some examples, but I just want to, you know, set the stage. Um, and I think in life, there are lessons that you may have to relearn. And I think this is a lesson that I've been having to relearn. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because I feel like a lot of you guys could probably relate and you know really benefit from hearing this too. I'm gonna do my eyebrows off camera and then I'm come, come right back. Oh, I guess this is a good time to say that if you guys are excited for today's topic, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. We talk all types of things here because we're glowing and growing. My baby, I like you. Like you. My baby, I die for you. All right, I'm back. Um, imposter syndrome. <laughs> imposter syndrome and counting yourself out. So let me tell you guys a little story. So the other day, I don't know when the other day was, but the other day, yeah? I went to my laser hair removal appointment. You know, just for the Brazilians down there and underarms, you know. I like going to laser hair removal, cool. And I realized that I forgot my numbing cream. So I had to buy numbing cream like, you know, on my way to the laser appointment. And when I get to the place after I bought the numbing cream, cause I was in a rush, cause I was trying not to miss my appointment, I realized who in the world keeps texting me? So I realized on the way to, to the appointment, right? That I bought the wrong numbing cream. It wasn't even numbing cream. I don't, how that happened, don't know. But it wasn't even numbing cream. So I actually had to sit through that appointment in pain. It was 10 minutes, but still, it was it was a hard 10 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, so after the appointment, right, I'm headed back home, and remember, I bought this numbing cream that wasn't even numbing cream, so it's the wrong thing. My first thought is, I need to return this thing because it wasn't even numbing cream, but I already tried it, I already opened it, I used it, it was after I used it that I realized, oh, this is not it. So my first thought was, Chizzy, they're not gonna they're not gonna accept it. You already opened it. Before even trying, I was like, oh, it's not gonna work out because I already opened it. So they're not, they're, there's no way they would honor my return. Created a whole scenario in my mind without even trying. Now, I have a friend, right? 
And one thing I love about this friend of mine is that she is always like, just try. Did you try? Try, just try it. You never know what's gonna happen. So I heard her voice in my mind um, as I was telling myself that there's no way that I'm gonna accept this return. And I was like, Chizzy, you just have to try because I've been noticing lately that my mind does this. It always goes, oh yeah, it's not gonna work out, da, 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 before even trying. And that's how I end up counting myself out before even trying. So I went back to the place. I went back to the store and you know, I had just literally used it once. So I just put it back in a package, you know, made it nice. What is this? And I was just like, hey, I would like to return this. I actually bought the wrong item. And the lady was like, okay. <laughs> Sis was like, okay, do you have the receipt? I was like, no, I don't have the receipt, but I do have, cause I didn't take the receipt. That's also why I tried to say it wasn't gonna work because I didn't have the receipt. So I was like, oh, if I don't have the receipt, they're not gonna take it back. I had the thing on my credit card, like the item statement, whatever. Cause I had just purchased it like 15 minutes ago. Like it, I, it wasn't that long ago. And I was at the same register that it happened at. So she was like, okay, we can find, we can pull it up. I said, wow. So she just made a way like that, right? And that, and then, you know, she had to go through a couple of things before, you know, she ended up finding my statement, found the receipt, and she was able to honor my return. And that situation really got me thinking about how many times I have counted myself out of something before even trying. And if there's one thing you want to make sure, like if you want to make sure that you actually don't succeed at something is to not try. That is the sh very sure way to make sure you don't succeed at it because you didn't even try in the first place, right? Now, you know, that numbing cream or whatever, that was a small example, but I feel like God has been showing me just little things, like little examples that actually can show up in a bigger, in a much bigger way. Because even though that was a small instance of, or yeah, small instance or experience of me counting myself out, how many times, and you can think of this for yourself too, how many times have I decided to, you know, not try and make, you know, create that business or not try to like put out that content because I just feel like, oh, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna relate to that or whatever, or it's not gonna do well or blah, blah, blah. Like I could count, I could name so many instances where I have literally talked myself out of something before even trying to do it. And thank God <laughs> I'm here, right? So I don't always do this, but I, I still do do this, right? Just every once in a while. And it really, honestly, the whole thing really got me thinking. I'm just like, oh my God, like I actually have to nip this thing in the butt because this is how I can miss out on my husband. <laughs> no, seriously, because today is numbing cream. Tomorrow is the man that God has prepared for me. What if I'm just like, oh, yeah, he won't even, he's not even interested in me. He didn't, didn't. You didn't even try. Or it could be something like, oh, I'm not gonna get into that program, so I'm not even gonna apply. Ah, so you, you're not even gonna try? Like, you have to try. So I just feel like I've just been getting this sign and message to like, try, 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 try. You just have to try. Like, you actually never know what the outcome is gonna be. And this is not to say that the outcome is always gonna be favorable, but you're not gonna know unless you try. <laughs> unless you try. So now I've just been thinking about like, where does that even come from? Like, what is that thing that is causing me to not wanna try in the first place? It could be a lot of different things to something that now I'm just like spending some time really trying to like think about and meditate on because we cannot have this. <laughs> have this in my life and I think ultimately for me it's fear it's fear <laughs> fear that it's not gonna work out fear that I'm gonna be disappointed fear of the unknown fear of they're gonna tell me no I think it's rooted in fear and baby operating and walking in fear it's gonna get you nowhere it's gonna get you 
nowhere. That, that's one thing I know for sure. Walking and operating in fear is, first off, it's, one, first of all, it's a direct con contradiction to my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I have faith in him, that all things will work towards my good and that he would never just leave me. <laughs> Why am I so fearful of the unknown? Now, let's say, I'm not trying to force my beliefs on you, right? Cool. But let's say you're like, oh, the universe is gonna work towards my good, <laughs> right? You operating in fear is a direct contradiction of that. Why do you believe that the universe that all things won't work for your good. Why do you feel like everything is not gonna work out? And you, and this is how, this is how the brain and the mind lies to you. It will, now that you're thinking that subconsciously, it will now have you take actions or lack thereof, take non-action to ensure that that thing does not happen for you. I'm scared that they're gonna reject me and not take this thing back and now, you know, I'm gonna sit there rejected. And, or I'm scared that like I'm gonna put them in a in a compromising position, you know, I'm gonna like, it's gonna cause more issues for them, it's gonna put them uncomfortable space and me too. So I won't even try to do the return, right? Well, now if you don't try to do the return, you're gonna make sure, <laughs> you're going to make sure that that happens for you, right? You're not gonna get the return. You're not gonna know anything. You're not gonna feel that rejection, but you weren't even gonna be rejected in the first place. So I've just noticed that like, anytime my mind just doesn't wanna do something, I know that that's my indicator that I actually need to try. I just know now, like, and ooh, Lord, how? And it's so cool, like, now I'm having like, and that's the thing in life, right? If there's something that you wanna work on, start small. So for me, me, you know, trying to work on the whole counting myself, not counting myself out, of stuff, I started small with, okay, I don't want to return this thing because I'm, I'm scared. I just feel like they're not going to take it back. <laughs> so I'm going to try. I'm going to try anyway. That is, to me, that's a small thing, right? And as with time, I'm going to try this with bigger things. Now, um, maybe next time, I don't know, I'm going to go up to that person and introduce myself. This could be a networking event. This could be anything, you know what I mean? Like, you have to take those baby steps. Um, so that was something that like really stood out to me and I wanted to share. And I, I just feel like that's something I can throw at you guys. Like, what are some things that you have counted yourself out of? And why do you feel like you counted yourself out of it? Like, what do you, you know, explore what the root of that could be and how can you like try again? So that's one. And then I think this also translates into content. So when it comes to imposter syndrome, I feel like it's very easy to start feeling like everyone else is doing amazing on social media and you're not. And I I spoke about this on my, I think on my TikTok. So yeah, I feel like this also can translate to social media. So I am a content creator, full time, right? Um, and I, for the last few weeks particularly, I noticed, I mean, there's a lot of things that go with this, but either way, just <laughs> follow along. Um, but for the, for the last few weeks, I started feeling like, I guess I started comparing myself quite a bit. Um, not that I want to compare myself, because <laughs> that's actually never what I want to do. There's no point in comparing yourself. And when I say compare myself, like, I don't go to someone, I'm like, ooh, I want to be like her. But like, it's more just like, I just started feeling super overwhelmed with all the content that I have to post and it was me and I was seeing people post so much and then I started feeling like oh, everyone just seems to understand you know everyone is just posting away like why am I struggling with this so much that's what it was like so that's what I mean by comparing for me I started feeling this way so much to the point that I just didn't post anything <laughs> you know when you're just frozen and stuck that's what it felt like. I started feeling like, I don't know what to post. I feel like people only like me for a certain type of type of content or video or like, I don't know how to explain it, like, or the algorithm only likes this type of content. So I, sh I need to package it in a certain type of way before I post. And that was making me kind of like freeze because now 
I'm feeling pressure to be a certain type of way. You know, TikTok, is, if you get on the other side of TikTok, it's very aesthetic. So I started feeling like, you know, maybe I just need to like put my videos more together or like, you know, just overthinking. <laughs> Completely and utterly overthinking. Um, to the point where it just made, had me frozen, just frozen. I wasn't posting anything because I didn't know what to post. And now I do think these feelings were particularly heightened because of my PMS symptoms. Because one thing I have noticed is that a few days before that time of the month, my cycle, I get um, way more sad, I'm more critical, I'm more insecure, I'm, I feel overwhelmed, I have a lot of anxiety. Um, so it's always good to know this stuff because then I know that I know why I'm feeling this way and I know that the feeling won't last forever because I don't always feel this way. Yeah, so that's that's another way that I can, you know, you can start feeling imposter syndrome. So a part of it was feeling like, you know, everyone is posting away and I'm not. And then the other part of it was I started feeling like I needed to package my content in a certain type of way to like make sure it's being seen on the algorithm and et cetera, et cetera. Overthinking to the point that I actually ended up doing nothing, right? And I think that is um, also interesting because what I realized from that is that there's no reason or it doesn't make sense to try and be something that you're not. I am not your aesthetics mommy. You do not come to me for aesthetics and vibes. <laughs> you don't. You come to me for vibes, but really high quality visuals and blah, blah, blah. It's not me. It's not me. Mm? I'm here for the message. No matter how the message is packaged, I I care more about that. And I am more quick on the fly. I'm more about just what we're speaking about. And if that's sometimes I'm witty and funny, or you know, if if that's translated through my my wittiness and my sarcasm and my funniness and just like, you know, me throwing in the Nigerian accent every once in a while or whatever it is, then that's one way. If that's tomorrow, uh, I'm showing you my messy room and I, I, I have my pimple patches on. That's another thing. If that's me doing my makeup, fine. I don't know, I started feeling like I kind of needed to be perfect, which is so opposite. <laughs> it's so opposite of everything I do on here. I like the entire reason why I started social media in the first place is to show the reality of what being a woman, a black woman, a black woman with 4C natural hair, a black woman with darker skin and 4C natural hair, what that is actually like for me. So why am I now trying to be something that I'm not, to do something that I'm not, to do something that completely contradicts everything that I stand for? And that's why it's really important to curate your feeds. One of the things that I noticed was that I've been scrolling a lot more, so I see so much more content and it was overstimulating me and starting to make me think, oh, I should do this, I should incorporate this. And there's nothing wrong with inspiration, but you don't need that much inspiration because your gift is inherently in you, right? You don't need that much of inspiration, just a few. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I just, I was reminded that my gift is my gift, right? It doesn't, it's a waste of tr time trying to be someone that I'm not trying to do the opposite of what comes natural to me. And that's where I think a lot of people go wrong when it comes to content. You're trying to do something that is not natural to you. You have to find what works for you, what comes natural to you. So my gift, my gift is that I'm able to see the world in another way. I'm able to come on to social media and tell you the real. It doesn't bother me. That's what I like. I like to see that. So why am I trying to come on to social media every time now and I'm before I film I must do my makeup and I must everything must look perfect and da 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 before I That's not me. That's not me. That's not me. And I was watching this sermon the other day. I'm gonna link it down below, but um it was by Prophet Lo Lovey and he said something that was really interesting and stuck out to me. He was like you see the world because it was he was basically talking about like how do you like find out what your gift is like you know what i mean what your thing is he was like 
You see the world through your gift. Everything you do is through the lens of your gift. So that's why a lot of us have different perspectives on different things and different opinions on things because we see things through our gift. So that really stood out to me because at first I was like, oh, so how do I see the world? But you can't really think of it like that. You kind of just, as you live <laughs> and as you just go through the day, like what are the things that you naturally look to or what are the things that naturally pique your interest? So for him, he is a prophet. So he literally like would like see things. <laughs> he, he was like, he want to be a prophet. He was basically like, I wanted to be a musician. But every time I saw people, I literally would see like visions of what's happening and what happened before and what's going to happen to them after. Literally, he saw the world through his gift. And it really made me think about what my gift is, right? And I think it's really cool. You can try this for yourself to figure out what your gift is. You probably already, you already know what your gift is, but sometimes you're not like solid in it. But um, I think I have many gifts. <laughs> I think I'm very talented. But I think my main gift is honestly my perspective. I am a beautiful woman, right? But, and I, and I live, I guess, a glamorous life, I don't know. But I see things, I don't know how to explain it, but like, I'm not, moved by the world I like for people to feel seen I like to talk about the things that people necessarily people don't necessarily want to talk about things that they keep to themselves that's what I want to talk about because I feel like that's more important like it doesn't matter how beautiful you look on the outside it doesn't matter how much money you're making it doesn't matter the type of car you're driving the high-rise that you live in blah 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 the educate the higher education that you have it doesn't matter because if baby if you're not happy on the inside none of it matters <laughs> none of it matters and i just like to talk about the things that hit home like actually um and I'm able to connect with people through in real life and through camera. That's my gift. So everything that I do is through this medium. For a little while, I kind of just got, not lost, but just a little confused, you know? Like just, cause I was trying to do everything, trying to keep up with the algorithm and it's like, this is not working. Just do you, baby. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if you guys are understanding my vibe, but just know in my mind, it makes sense. <laughs> just know that in my mind, it's clicking <laughs> and I hope it clicks for you. <laughs> um, ultimately, my point is we all naturally have our own gifts, our, the things that make us us, the way that we see the world. And if you're if you want to show up on social media or through anything, right? Instead of trying to create content the way you think people want to receive it, show them or create content the way that you see the world. I think that was, I, I think that was something. No, but yeah, like show them what you want to see. That's ultimately what is, what is it about? What it's about. What do you want to hear? What do you want to tell? It's not about what they want to hear. What do you want to hear? And you'll find your tribe. People will naturally find you. And I actually really like TikTok for that reason. Um, cause I do, I feel like people, the way the algorithm is set up, people will, the people that you're trying to reach, the algorithm will make them find you. So, um, um, so yeah, so yeah, ultimately, you know, if you show the world how you view things, the people that are supposed to come to you and gravitate to you will, right? You will ultimately find your people and your audience. Um, and that's with anything in life, like even in real life, like there's no need to pretend to be someone that you're not. The, the people that are supposed to be in your life are going to find you. And they're going to find you when you are operating in your true self. Uh, when you are operating in your true gift. Uh, like right now, literally right in this moment, I'm operating in my gift, which wow, thank God. <laughs> but this is, this is what I love to do. This is what I love to talk about. Like, this is fun to me. Um, and I don't have to be anybody else. It's okay. 
this is enough. This is enough for me, this is fine. It doesn't have to be everything. I don't have to be everywhere. I don't have to be doing everything. With time, my gift will be cultivated into uh, through other mediums, but like, I just need to focus on right now and what I can do right now with what I have. I don't know, I think I'm just, I've, I don't know if I'm making sense, but these are just the things in my mind. Um, and I feel like I needed to hear it, so I feel like somebody else needed to hear it too. Actually, I know somebody needs to hear that, so. Let me know if this, you need to hear this below so you can make me feel better, thank you. Um, but yeah, honestly, that's kind of what, what has been on my mind. I'm gonna do this. Okay. So much is in the world, right? We see so much content. We see so much visual content on social media, on, you know, just all types of media in general. And it's so easy to get frozen and stuck in in what we have to offer because we, we, we see so much of what everyone else is doing. We see everyone else operating in their gifts and you kind of start feeling like, oh my, well, I, I don't know what I need to do because it's not looking this certain way. And it's like, bro, you actually have to tune out all of that. Turn it off, turn it off. What you naturally do is what you naturally do. You will find your gift eventually, like you will, it just happens. <laughs> It just happens like what are the things that people come to you for like what are the how do you view the world like those are all things that could easily be your gift but um yeah that's kind of like my thought and I'm just I'm remembering that I have so much to offer right and I don't have to do everything it is okay and I think some of you guys may probably be surprised by like what I'm saying, like, oh, Chizzy, I thought you were really confident. I am, but I, that does not mean I don't have times where I feel a little bit more insecure or I start to question what I'm doing or I don't try something because I'm low-key scared. Like, ooh, you know what I mean? Like, everyone goes through it. Everyone goes through it. Um, what matters is what you do with those feelings. Like. Do I let these things silence me forever and keep me frozen forever? That is, an, is a hard pass for me, it's a no. You know, one thing about me, I'm gonna try anyway. <laughs> I'm going to, if I don't learn it the first time, I'm gonna learn it again. And I feel like this is something I've just been learning, just that concept of counting yourself out before even trying. Um, so that's how it ties into social media, just, you know, being frozen and stuck and not posting because, you just see everyone else doing so many things, but it's like, how you see the world matters. That is literally your gift. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. <laughs> that's my thoughts. I really wanna hear you guys' thoughts on all of this. Um, is this something you're experiencing? How are you getting through it? Um, what is your experience with imposter syndrome? And yeah, comment down below. Because me, I wanna talk to you. I wanna hear your thoughts. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed. I try to make videos here weekly. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye y'all.